Hey there, welcome. I'm so glad to see you today. Um, today we're going to be reading Gus and the Baby Ghost by Jane Thayer. There's Gus hanging some laundry. All right. Gus the Ghost and Mr. Frizzle ran the historical museum. Gus at night and Mr. Frizzle during the day. Mr. Frizzle lived upstairs. Gus had an attic apartment. Cora the cat lived here and there. And Mouse the mouse had his own private quarters. Late one night when Gus was in charge, Cora came in from a moonlight walk and said, A baby ghost said... A baby ghost said... <laughs> Let me try again. A baby ghost's outside. Let me see it right here. Sure enough, a baby ghost wrapped in a ghostly blanket lay on the step. What do I do with it? Gus cried. Wah! yelled the baby ghost. Feed, said Cora. Grown-up ghosts never get hungry, but baby ghosts often do. Gus carried the baby ghost in its blanket into the old-fashioned kitchen and found some milk. Warm, advised Cora. Gus warmed the milk. Bottle, said Cora. Gus made some ghostly remarks and a baby's bottle appeared. Wah! yelled baby ghost when the milk was gone. Burp, advised Cora. Gus tossed baby ghost over his shoulder and patted until a bubble came up. Wah! Change, directed Cora. Gus produced a clean diaper. Coo, said baby ghost contentedly when the diaper was changed. Sleepy, said Cora. Gus had just laid Baby Ghost in the antique cradle and covered it with the old paisley shawl when Mr. Frizzle came running downstairs, his bathrobe flying. I thought I heard a baby, he cried. Baby Ghost, corrected Gus. Where, yelled Mr. Frizzle. Cradle, said Gus. The cradle looked emptied of Mr. Frizzle, but he could see it was rocking gently. What in thunder is going on here, he shouted. Sleeping, said Gus. Mr. Frizzle, who had a terrible temper, began to shout and tell Gus he wouldn't have a baby ghost in his museum. Gus began to shout back, not knowing what else to do. Cora went under the Boston rocker and Mouse scurried into the wall. Baby Ghost waked up with all this noise and yelled, Wah! Coral yelled, Meow! Mouse snarled, Shut up! Go to bed, Frizzle! Go to bed, Frizzle, shouted Gus. Finally, Mr. Frizzle pounded upstairs. When he had gone, Gus sat down with a sigh of relief whew, in his Boston rocker, and Cora leaped onto his lap. Gus rocked the cradle until Baby Ghost fell asleep. Gus understood how Mr. Frizzle felt. Frizzle was proud that many people came to see the museum, and he didn't want anything to frighten them. Gus kept out of the way, but a crying Baby Ghost might not. I'll do something tomorrow, thought Gus. He fell asleep, rocking the cradle. Baby Ghost slept, and Cora slept. Only Mouse whisked about busily, looking for a crumb of something. When daylight came, Gus warmed another bottle for Baby Ghost. Bath, advised Cora. Gus got a baby's bathtub and filled it with warm, ghostly water. 
Baby Ghost was so cute, splashing and happily gurgling, that Gus began to feel happy himself. When he had it all dry and smelling of ghostly talcum powder, he decided he would like to keep this little baby ghost. But I can't keep it in my attic apartment, he told himself. It has to sleep in the cradle. Besides, my ghostly bones are too old to run upstairs with bottles. He carried Baby Ghost back to the old cradle. Wah! cried Baby Ghost, who was hungry again. Down came Frizzle, filled with fury. It's still here, he cried. Shh, said Gus. Call the police, shouted Mr. Frizzle. Very funny, said Gus. Wah! yelled Baby Ghost. Mr. Frizzle called the police himself. There's a baby ghost at the historical museum. Come and get it. Beg pardon, said the police. I want to get rid of a baby ghost, shouted Mr. Frizzle. Two policemen came. What seems to be the trouble, they said. We've got a baby ghost, said Mr. Frizzle. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Frizzle? asked the police. I feel fine, shouted Frizzle. Show us this baby ghost, said the policeman politely. But Gus had decided that he was going to scare the policeman away. He raced upstairs and brought down his bang clank equipment, which he kept in case somebody wanted to hear a ghost clanking around. Bang! Clank! went Gus on his bang clank equipment. Wah! yelled Baby Ghost at the noise. The policemen turned pale and bumped into each other, rushing out the door. <clears throat> Just then, an early visitor arrived. Keep that kid quiet! hissed Frizzle. Gus snatched Baby Ghost from the cradle and gave it a bottle. He sang a ghostly lullaby until it went back to sleep. Frizzle felt calmer when the visitor left, without knowing they had a baby ghost. He said in a reasonable voice, Now, Gus, you know you've got to get rid of it. If I keep it quiet, Gus thought craftily, Frizzle never will know it's here. Leave it to me, Frizzle, he said, and Mr. Frizzle went off reassured. Then Gus got a book on the care and feeding of baby ghosts. So what do you think Gus is going to do? Is he going to read up on how to take care of a baby ghost? He ordered milk from the milkman and put in supplies of baby food, ghostly diapers, and talcum powder to keep baby ghost comfy. He found a ghostly rattle and other toys to keep it amused. He oiled the antique music box so it played tinkly tunes that Baby Ghost liked to hear. Baby Ghost was content and didn't cry. But one day, Mr. Frizzle, who thought the Baby Ghost was gone, happened to be passing the cradle when he heard a soft coo. He stopped short and stared at the cradle. You didn't get rid of it, he shouted. Wah! yelled Baby Ghost, alarmed at the noise. Meow! yelled Cora, alarmed by Baby Ghost. Listen, Frizzle! yelled Gus. Then he lowered his voice. If you would control your temper, everything would be fine. Finally, Mr. Frizzle sat down in the Boston rocker, not knowing what else to do. He lowered his voice, too, and said, Har, hump. He stared at the cradle, which still looked empty to him. Do you swear it won't cry and ruin business, he demanded. If you don't come roaring around, retorted Gus. Har, hump, said Mr. Frizzle. Then Gus put up a large sign. What does that sign say? Can you read that? Quiet, please. Good job. 
he put up a large sign to remind Mr. Frizzle. Mr. Frizzle began to talk to visitors in hushed tones. He stopped shouting at Gus. He didn't even say, Har, humph, because he didn't want to wake the baby ghost and make it cry and alarm the people. But Gus saw him glance at the cradle sometimes, and he knew Mr. Frizzle was nervous. One day, Mr. Frizzle was telling a lady visitor in hushed tones so he wouldn't wake baby ghost. This is an antique cradle. Suddenly, Mr. Frizzle, the visitor, and Gus, who was nearby, were startled to hear quite plainly, Coo! What would you do if you were looking at an empty cradle and you heard a sound? You heard a baby go, Coo! Have you got a baby ghost? the lady cried. Certainly not, cried Frizzle. Oh, I wish you had a baby ghost, said the lady sadly. Frizzle looked at the lady in surprise. He eyed her suspiciously. Was she joking? He liked to please the visitors to his museum. So finally, Frizzle said cautiously, We might have a small baby ghost. The lady rushed off to tell her friends that this wonderful, delightful historical museum had something very special. A real baby ghost. Soon, crowds of people came, tiptoed in, and stood around waiting to hear the baby ghost. In the antique cradle under the old paisley shawl, say, Coo! Your baby ghost sounds so happy, everyone whispered. Mr. Frizzle proudly whispered back, Our baby ghost has a happy home, that's why. Before long, baby ghost was a permanent member of the household. Sometimes, when the museum closed after a busy day, Mr. Frizzle sat down in the Boston rocker in a rare good humor. Cora leaped onto his lap. Mouse kept as quiet as a mouse. Mr. Frizzle rocked the cradle. While Gus hung baby ghosts ghostly washing out in the evening air. The end.